the digital battle with your host, Flipper. Colorful commentary on your photography. Seen on fingerlegs1.com. Hey, 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 everybody. It's the digital babble coming to you live from Studio B. B for basement, I guess. Anyway, I'm Flipper, and I'm your host for this evening. And uh, we're going to be talking about a lot of different things, I guess. Well, not a lot of different things. Two different things. We're going to do a little segment on photography about the P or program mode. And then in the Photoshop area, we're going to take over and go over into Photoshop and take a cell phone picture that somebody happened to take. A good friend of mine. uh, She's a a fantastic sport about letting me use this photo. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take it through all the basic edits uh, to make the the take the photo from being a cell phone picture and making it something a little bit more um so we're gonna go through like uh highlights of the hair changing the exposure uh smoothing the skin doing some things with the eyes bringing the eyes out making the eyes sparkle and that'll be the whole second half of the show so this is the digital babble uh it's a photography and photoshop show with me on every Wednesday night here on FingerLakes1.com. And it's just kind of a fun show, just educational. And you can ask questions. If you want to ask questions, you can email me at thedigitalbabble at gmail.com. Or if you want to uh, submit some photos, you can also do that as well. And if you'd like to... Uh, Go check out our new website. I'm having a hard time with this website yet, uh, so bear with me. Uh, it's uh, tdbny.com, and you can go check out previous shows. Uh, I'm going to start writing some how-tos. I just started writing one the other day about how to do this uh, uh, portrait makeover in Photoshop. And if you don't have Photoshop, it's okay, because there's a lot of programs out there that work similarly to Photoshop. You can get Photoshop elements that will work pretty much about the same way that we're going to do any of the photo edits tonight uh, will we'll work in both Photoshop and Photoshop Elements. If you got Lightroom, you could kind of get an idea how to make these edits happen. But again, it's one of those things, it's a little different. You're going to have to play around with it a little bit. Now, as, uh, as far as like uh, Photoshop Elements goes, it's really just a watered-down version of Photoshop, and it's it takes the core of Photoshop and really makes it uh, more uh, home user based or uh, just a little bit easier, a little different, but it still has a lot of the same power and functionality like blurring and sharpening and all that wonderful stuff. So so for the first part of the show, I'm going to get right into it here. We're going to get right into the P mode on your camera. And this is uh, signified or program mode, and this is signified by a capital P. It's on the mode dial. So let me flip over to our, our magic slideshow here, hopefully. Uh, okay, so here we got a camera up, and basically you got the mode dial up top, and on that mode dial you'll see a bunch of characters, which we've already covered so far. If you haven't seen the previous shows, go back and check some of the previous shows. You'll see that we covered uh, macro, we've covered uh, action, uh, scenic uh, settings, and as well as the general and full auto modes. So now we're going to go the opposite way on the dial, and we're going to go through the letter uh, settings, the letter modes. So the first one up is P, program mode. And what this does is it works fairly similar to the full automatic mode, except for a few changes. And those changes are, it, it basically adds the adjustments, or a few adjustments, that allows you to manipulate the exposure uh, with some minor tweaks so it allows you to tweak your your full auto mode like in full auto mode you couldn't really tweak too much you couldn't use exposure compensation you really couldn't change your iso other than what the the uh, range it gave you was so in p mode it's full auto but now you get to play with some adjustments such as exposure compensation so you can go plus or minus, like on a Canon camera, I know we can go plus or minus uh, two full stops. So you can go two full stops brighter, two full stops darker. Uh, in addition to that, you can also compensate for low light more by because you have full control over your ISO. 
The camera still takes an evaluative uh, scene, an exposure or meter reading of what the scene looks like and says, okay, this scene needs to be this shutter with this uh, uh, aperture. And then it will automatically give you those settings. But then you can take and change the exposure compensation by minus or plus so many thirds of a stop of light all the way up to two full stops either direction. So this is great for when you're trying to shoot like a white subject or most of the scene is white. If you just shoot it with zero compensation, it's going to turn out probably pretty gray. Uh, and that, that gray is just not going to look right. It's not going to look like snow. Snow is supposed to be white. So uh, what you could do is then exposure compensation up, so positive, by maybe a stop or half a stop or two-thirds of a stop or whatever your camera allows is by adjusting that exposure compensation just a little bit for the subject in front of you. Maybe you have, uh, you'll see in some of the examples here coming up, maybe you have a subject that's more black. Like I have a black bear statuette that I took in one of the, the examples here. And maybe you need the black to be black. So by changing the exposure compensation to a negative one, uh, maybe like a negative one compensation, it'll make the exposure a little darker and probably bring those blacks out or put those blacks where they're supposed to be. So that's one of the big advantages about working in P mode. It's still full auto, but you have control over your exposure compensation and your ISO. So you can really mess around with trying to get low light, uh, maybe a couple different things with uh, exposure compensation because maybe what's in front of you is really light and it's the camera's trying to make it gray or maybe it's really dark and it's trying to make it lighter gray so you want to darken it up. Uh, maybe you got a really neat sunset in front of you and you just want to make it a little bit more darker because it'll bring the colors out or something. You can just take that little exposure compensation setting wherever it is in your camera. On my Canon G12, it's right on top, right where the right next to the shutter button there. Uh, it's just like on this Nikon camera that we have sitting on the board here right now. That other dial that's right below the word shutter is the exposure compensation. So it goes plus or minus two in third stop increments. So that's something to keep in mind when you're out shooting with your point and shoots. You can get so much better photos by really thinking about it and going, okay, what's in front of me? What color is it? Is it really light? Is it really dark? Is it uh, gray? Is it not gray? Is there something in there that is gray? Uh, and then really knowing what you're looking at and then saying, well, geez, usually the camera takes this a little too dark. Let's uh, pop it up by a half a step or a third a step or whatever the case may be. And so you do. And then lo and behold, it looks better. And then you don't have to do as much work in Photoshop later or making uh, compensation for it. So I, there's, there's definitely some major benefits. Uh, it does, uh, you know, P mode does have the full auto brain working for you. It also has the uh, the full automatic focus for you, usually on most point and shoots, means that it will automatically detect if there's motion in the scene and then try to pick what type of autofocus mode you want. Uh, the other benefits are is that you're going to get the exposure compensation as well as the extended ISO range so you can play with the exposure. What's bad about the, the program mode? Uh, what is bad about this full automatic mode? <clears throat> One is always, uh, me, myself, I would say that there is a downside to having full automatic uh, because you tend to forget what you're doing. You're not looking at your settings and you're just firing away and you're not knowing why it's not working. So letting the camera think all the time for you all the time sometimes can be uh, a detrimental thing. And that's basically why I feel that you know full auto sometimes is a bad thing. Sometimes, not all the time, sometimes. A lot of times, I think I've mentioned it in previous shows, usually the full auto I use to get my base exposure, and then I work with the full manual mode, and I start working my, my shot until I get it where I want it to be. So the other thing is, is some scenes could be in inadvertently darker or lighter because the camera is going to take a wide uh, exposure reading across the scene, nice wide exposure setting. So the whole frame is going to be uh, metered. And then you have to tell the camera, is this a dark scene or a light scene? Well, geez, if it's really a darker scene, 
then let's tell the camera it's a darker scene by changing that exposure compensation to negative. Now I have seen some cameras who reverse the positive and the negative uh, they, because they're saying exposure compensation is based on what's in front of the camera. So maybe if a darker scene is in front of the camera, really you wanna brighten the exposure or something of that nature. And I've seen where they're backwards. I don't know why that, that is. So definitely check your manual. Make sure that, you know, minus means darker and positive means lighter, you know, before you start taking these tips out and going, oh, I don't know why this ain't working. So th that's really the the thing that I, the best tip I can give you right now about program mode. You know, check your manual before you get out there and start firing away and just get frustrated. Uh, two things with uh, the program mode that I really like. Uh, and, and like I said, I've said it already, and I'll say it again, is that it gives you full control over your exposure with exposure compensation. So here's a great example of exposure compensation. I went outside and I tried to hold the camera still. I handheld this whole whole shot so things won't line up exactly, but you can get the gist. So you can see negative one exposure. Everything's kind of dark gray. Background's really black. You know, it looks muddy almost. The zero exposure looks fairly good. Uh, I exposed for the white area, but if you notice, the white tulip is not exactly white. It's actually more gray. So I said to myself, I said, okay, let's go plus one to show the, the difference here. You know, show the full spread, uh, full range, the full spread of, of one exposure under, the normal exposure, and the one exposure above. Uh, and as you can see, you know, the flower brightens right up kind of whitish. You know, you get some nice highlights to it. It really looks nice. It looks like it's sun-filled. It really has some uh, flair to it, some meat, makes it a little exciting. The next example is a bunch of yellow daffodils, I believe. And same concept. You can see how in the minus one exposure, everything got kind of muddy and dark. In the zero exposure, they look about right. Could have stood to be a little bit brighter. The plus one is a little way overcooked, uh, as you can see in, in, in the example down here. It's definitely a little overcooked. The yellows are way too bright. They just need to be just a hair, maybe a third of a stop less. So I probably should have set the exposure compensation to plus one third, plus two thirds, and it probably would have been right on. <clears throat> and of course, this example, actually, I don't know if this was the right example I wanted to give. Let me see. I thought there was one more here. Nope. One, two, three. I must have lost the other one. Okay. No problem. Let's just keep going here. I'm going to try to keep going here. Which one was I on? This one. Okay. So here uh, is a little wizard figurine that was sitting in our garden, uh, sitting behind, uh, I think they were kind of African violets. They're small uh, spring flowering uh, plant. That's what's in the foreground. I kind of was trying to make it look like I was peering through the woods to see this guy. And uh, this is the normal exposure and you can see the beard's a little bright, but it still has a lot of the tea tails and the, the, the gray in it. The cement wall in the background is definitely gray. And the leaves up front and the purples kind of stand out. And the colors don't look real rich, but they don't look real dull at the same time. So this is where the standard exposure gives you. And this is the full auto, automatic mode. So uh, one more example here, I believe. Mr. Teddy Bear. This was the teddy bear I was talking about a minute ago. Uh, the original shot was very, very gray. The bear looked gray. The blacks were gray. So I did an exposure compensation, and I made a couple of uh, quick lighting changes. And what I did was I just added a flash, and this is what I got. So it kind of looks like I'm peering through the jungle at the uh, bear chilling out here, and it's kind of cute. But it's a great example of, of how the darks could get really dark and the lights can get really light or uh, you could have some problems with you know that contrast uh, here we compensated for that comp contrast by darkening the photo and uh, in the camera with the exposure compensation and then increasing the iso by a touch i think it was maybe 200 and that's what we got for the exposure right out of the camera so that's that's the P mode. It's just like auto. It's just like auto, but it gives you a few extra controls to help you get from point A to point B with your photography. Helps you give a little brighter, a little darker. Uh, if you don't have as much light to work with, you can actually increase the ISO and get a little more light to work with. So 
That's how to do full auto with P or program mode. You can find it on just about any camera out there, especially your SLRs. Uh, most SLRs nowadays, I think, are they're getting away from the full automatic modes, which are the uh, the, the the caricatures and the symbols, and they're going just to the letter modes. So probably in the next few weeks, we'll be doing TV, which is shutter, AV, which is aperture, priority. And what that means is TV would be shutter priority. So the shutter, you set the shutter, and then the camera sets everything else. TV is where, or AV is where you set the aperture, and then the camera sets everything else. And then we'll have A dept, so A dash D E P, manual, and then bulb will be the last last one. So for the next five weeks, those are the camera settings. So if you want to check those out and get some tips on those things, tune in every Wednesday night, 7 p.m. with me, Flipper on the Digital Babble, and we'll go over those things. Now, everybody's favorite time, well, not everybody's favorite time, but my favorite time, uh, I get to do something in Photoshop, and this week is really extra special because uh, my good friend Amy here uh, really did a great job of taking a great photo. Uh, I think it's great, but at the same time, we can enhance it even further and take it from what it was and put it into something else. Uh, and that's where we're going to try to take this. So uh, I'm just going to go right over into Photoshop. I'm not even going to draw on the canvas and we're just going to look at the photo. And that's all we're going to do for the rest of the show here. So here's Photoshop and I got a window in the way here. Let me get rid of that. So this is Miss Amy. And uh, I believe she's holding the camera or the phone in her hand uh, way out at arm's length, and she's trying to take a picture of herself against a drywall background, I think. But I don't care what the background is, to be perfectly honest, because we're actually going to modify that. So what are some of the things that I'm going to want to do with this photo? Well, I'm going to say probably number one, we're going to want to crop this just a touch, because the horizontal view of the photo really isn't as flattering for portraiture, this portraiture because it puts her eyes right in the middle. Uh, let me put a, a, I'm going to put a guide here. So right there, it's on a third, you know, it's a third of the way into the photo from the top, but it's more like dead center because there would be a third on one side, there would be a third on the other, and her eyes just don't line up any place where I, I think they would, I think they could be so much more powerful if they were on the thirds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to crop this. So I'll probably start with the crop first just so that we can have some fun, you know, from that point. Because why work with all that background when you don't need to if your final print's not going to be that big? So we're going to do, uh, let's see, we'll do an 8 by 10 I'm going to get rid of the 300 DPI because I don't want to change the resolution. I just want to change the size and shape. So let's see here. Where do we want to line this up? So there's there's our thirds. So, so it's an 8 by 10 There's our thirds. It looks all right, right there. I think that'll work. Maybe not. Let's let's try it the other way. Uh, now that gives us a little more empty space on the other side. I'm not too thrilled with that. I'm going to go back this way. I think I'm going to put put her eyebrow right there. That'll be nice. That way we can still get a hint of the hair and see all the different angles here for the eyes. We can see everything. So let's crop it right there. So that's the first thing. So now that we've cropped this. Uh, I'm going to zoom in here, and sorry that I keep going back and forth, but my, my finger's sticky for some reason here and, and on the uh, mouse wheel, and I keep uh, pulling it back at the same time as rolling it forward. So here we are, and we got some blemishes that we want to clean up. Not saying that she's not a pretty girl, so don't take it that way, but it's really the imperfections of the human skin. I mean, we are trying to take a photo that was this, and we're going to make it into this. So maybe we want to put this as her portfolio cover, or maybe she's going for a model uh, search or something of that nature. So, of course, the first thing we're going to want to do is go over it with a fine-tooth comb and get rid of any blemishes. I'm going to grab the healing brush right here, and I'm going to get right into the photo, and I'm going to zoom in nice and tight. Not real tight, but somewhat tight. And I'm going to start right up at the top, and I'm going to scan across, and when I come across a blemish, I'm just going to pop it off with the... Uh, healing brush. I'm not going to worry about anomalies right this second because I really, I'm, I'm just going to try to quickly clean this up so we can keep moving. So we get rid of these uh, blemishes and I'm going to work in, 
I'm really going to work in quadrants. I'm going to work in large areas so that I know once I'm done with this area, I'm done. I can move on to the next area. So we're going to just clean up some of these marks here. Do, do, do. Ever so slightly. I'm going to zoom back out. Okay, so quadrant one up top is good. Quadrant two is looking good. Uh, let's get down on the chin here a little bit more. We got a few marks here that we got to clean up. Now, notice as I zoom in, the resolution is fairly low. It's pixelated. But this also gives us an opportunity to see uh, see the photo edits as we do them because you really, when, when you're working in low res, you can get, uh, how do you put it, kind of a, uh, hmm. You can see the, the blemishes a little bit better, but at the same time, you can also see the edits that you did a little bit better. So, whereas if you have a big photo, sometimes you don't see the edits. I mean, it's easier to hide in a big photo. So, let's see. Whoops, we got another mark right here on her chin. That Yep, that took care of that. All right, let's go back up into the eyes and the eyebrows. Make sure everything looks clean up here. I like that. I like that. Yep, that's fine. Her nose is fine. Uh, maybe, we'll, maybe we'll hit a couple spots on her nose here. Just a... Uh, Blend it in together a little bit better. Make it more even tone. So now already just the face, uh, we've we've taken care of the face. So quadrant one, two, and now the eyes would be three and the lips would be four. So let's get into the lips here. And we're gonna check this out here. Okay, I'm gonna just clean up around the lips just ever so slightly. And try to get rid of some of these uh, shifts in tone. I don't wanna lose I don't want to lose the three-dimensional effect of the change in tone, but I definitely want to get rid of any distracting marks like, you know, uh, pimples or uh, maybe marks or a scar or something of that nature. I think we got that. The lips look all right. We could probably just... Nope, can't do that. Edit undo. <laughs> I clicked the mouse in the wrong spot. Uh, right here, we got another little mark here. So I'm going to shrink the brush so it's just that mark. See? Yep, there we go. One more. There we go. Now our lips look nice and nice and clean there. All right, so we're going to back it up. Now we're going to go into the next quadrant here, which will be the uh, shoulder area and the neck area. So let's see how we're doing on time. We're doing well. Very good. So we're going to get down in here. We're going to get the healing brush back out. We're going to get rid of all these little, little marks here, wherever we can get rid of them. You know, take a little here. Take a little there. Click, click, click. Now, Photoshop Elements has this brush. I also believe GIMP has it and uh, PaintShop Pro. Both programs are amazing for doing photo editing. And, you know, as you can see, this I'm, I'm actually rushing through this, and I, I shouldn't be rushing as much as I am, but I know I only have a limited amount of time. So I'm going to rush through the entire process. But at the same time, what I want you to keep in mind and what, what I think that you should try on your own is just for therapeutic reasons. Grab a photo and in your favorite photo editor, just start playing around, you know, and just do one of these and photo edit it and see where it takes you. Let yourself drift off and let, let yourself become part of the photo. Uh, take take your mind away from today and, and just, you know, just enjoy, uh, like, like right now. Right now it's kind of like me and Amy time uh, or whoever whoever I'm shooting or whoever I'm working on. Uh, I get to spend a little time with that person, you know, fixing a photo of them. And it can be very fun. It can be very therapeutic. Uh, let's see. we got to slide down here. And you'll notice I keep zooming in and out. And I know that's probably annoying to the viewer. But from the way I handle uh, photo edits, I like to, I like to get in close and, and take care of blemishes and stuff. Uh, clean them up. But then I want to back up so I can see if I did a good job or not. So, like, you know, we can see, like, here in her chest, she's got a little bit of a freckly kind of thing happening here. So we'll take out some of the bigger freckles but leave the other ones because we'll blur those out later. All right, let's back up again. Okay, so the skin now is looking phenomenal, in my opinion. Your opinion might be different. That's fine. But I like, I like where I'm at with this so far. The skin looks good. I've gotten rid of all the blemishes. We're looking good. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a copy of the layer by dragging the layer down onto the new icon. It'll give me a, a second layer. So this is this first layer is going to be, I'll call it, I'll name it so I can keep track of what I'm doing. Original blemish removal. Blemish. I can't spell. Removal. Of course you can't spell, right? I'm hooked on phonics. How about you? 
and then here, this is going to be now my next layer, which is go now going to be hair removal. So I'm going to take out the, the weird strands of hair that are just kind of not where they should be. So hair removal. So now we're going to start working with the background, and we're going to start working with these these uh, translucent sh uh, stray, sh stray strands of hair. Okay, now usually the best way to handle this is not the clone or not the uh, healing brush, but the clone brush. And the reason why I say that is we get in here and we set our brush size, we hit the alt key, gives us a targeting ring or a target icon, and we can hit a target. So we click on there and we hit a target. Now, when we come back and we start painting, notice the target comes back and that's where I'm painting from. So, like right now, I've gotten rid of that stray hair there. Uh, I don't like this this ball of hair here, so let's uh, grab another spot here, click, and we're going to do a little bit more here just to shape that hair up just a little bit, and click, and we're going to do a little bit more. Cute little strays of hair here that are going bye-bye, bye-bye. Whoops. Back up here. Now, now what I'm doing is I'm looking for the same tone that should be in the background. So this gray area here is about the same tone that'll be right here. So as I work this and I work the clone brush, I'm going to re-click and I'm going to just get random patterns here so I can clone out different areas of the photo like the stray hairs. And it'll still give me a random appearance. So like right there. Now I've just cleaned up this side of her head. Notice that now it, her head, her hair is taking shape to to the head, and it doesn't have a lot of flyaway hair on the side so far. I could probably clean up the rest of this here down through this area. Uh, yeah, I got time. Let's do it. Uh, let's see. So we'll get, grab some more clone stamp brush and just take a few of the highlights out. Get rid of some more of the stray hair. It's kind of like a haircut. It's almost like I'm a barber. Let's have it look. I'm a barber. Yep, that's it. I'm a digital barber. <laughs> so we're going to sit here and just chop up some of her hair here. Now, saying if you want to put some hair back, maybe you you find a section of hair that you really like. Uh, maybe this, this uh, poofy thing here, or maybe over here. Maybe we want to put it back. You can select that strand of hair and then paint it back in to the photo, just like that. You know, so we can shape this up. To make it more full, you know, give it a little more, a little more body here, like so. Maybe, maybe make this area just a little more there. There we go, blend it in. Now you can see I've just added hair. I've taken hair away. It's all based on what you're working with and where you're working with it. Okay, so we're gonna back up here. We're gonna look over here. Now, one problem, one very bad problematic area that we're gonna have is this, these strands of hair over here. Because they're translucent, I can see the shadow behind them. So it makes it very difficult to blend them. Uh, the mask is more gray than it is black or white. So it makes it very difficult to blend from the front to the back and so on and so forth. So I'm going to back it up here and I'm going to kind of take a look and see what I want to do. Is there any other stray hairs that are quick to remove? Yes, I like this, this right here. We're going to get rid of this section. Do, do, do. A little... Clean up some of these stray hairs here. Shape up her head here. Do, do, do. I should have probably put on some music. I could have been playing, uh, Amy, what you gonna do? One flipper makes a photo edit out of you. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Somebody asked me the other day if I was like the nutty professor of photography. I said, I could be. I don't know if I am, but I could be. Uh, let's see. I'm going to recorrect this just a little bit and give some different highlights here. Eh, I didn't like the way that came out. So your undo button is definitely your your best friend. If you got into trouble, you can back it off a little bit like I just did there. All right. I really like the way this is shaping up. We've cleaned up her blemishes. We've cleaned up her hair. Now what I want to do is I want to start playing with the tones. I want to start playing with the exposure. I want to start getting this... Uh, this feel for something more than just a cell phone picture. So, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually make a brand new layer just for grins. I want to see what it looks like. And I'm going to make it a fill color. I'm going to fill it with black. So I have Mary Black here. Boom. Black. She's gone, right? Now what I want to do is I'm going to make a, a mask. And I'm going to get a gradient out. And it's going to be a black to white gradient. 
and I'm going to go somewhere in the middle here, and I'm going to pull pull it nice and long here, and I went the wrong way because I don't have it set right. I'm going to set the gradient to a radial gradient, and I'm going to come from the middle again here, and it's wrong. It's in, Let's invert it. That's a little better. So now what I'm doing is I'm going to add some, some dramatic kind of vignetti to give it a little bit more dramatic feel, uh, make it a little more uh, sensuous, we'll say. Uh, I think that was also used by uh, Jeff Foxworthy. Uh, since you were up, you know, give me a beer or something of that nature. Uh, I know that was a bad joke. I'm sorry. Good joke for him. Bad joke for me. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to rebuild this uh, layer mask. I'm going to nice and large here. And I keep doing it in reverse. So edit undo. If you keep having a problem with your mask being in reverse, go up and find where it says reverse and click it. So now it will be reverse and it should be the right way that I want it. Almost a little bit bigger here. There we go. Now I'm gonna. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the opacity and I'm gonna dial it back to where I like it. I don't want it to really hinder the tones too much, but I do want it to just kind of darken up those edges just a touch. So right about there it gives gives her hair more of a dramatic feel to it. Uh, probably about 35, 36 percent. All right. So now we dialed that in. Now what I want to do is I'm going to take a, a black brush. I'm going to make it a big black brush on the on the mask layer here. And I'm going to just kind of go over the areas that I really want. Whoops. How did I get white? There we go. Black. I'm just going to clean up the areas that I don't want the mask to affect. Like her jewelry down here, her jewelry in her ear and her hairline in her face and her skin and just a touch down here. I want to want to paint with light, bring back a little bit of the light where I want the light. So I like that. I'm going to bring back a couple highlights in her hair up here by painting in just a little bit and get whoops too much back up to do do do. There we go. Just a little bit, just lighten it up. Just a touch. All right. I like it so far. So control all D. Okay, there we go. Now we got another layer here. All right. Now I'm going to, now I'm going to soften I'm going to literally take and soften the skin. So now this next next objective is going to take two layers. So we got our composite. Control Alt Shift D gives us a composite of what we see. Uh, I have that layer now, layer two. I'm going to make another duplicate layer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the top layer as the blur. Bottom layer is going to be the original. So we're going to blur it up. Blur, Gaussian blur. Hello. That's a bit too much blur. I can't see her details. I can't see her face. I'm going to bring it back down around four, three, two, uh, maybe just a touch more. Come on. Uh, let's try it. Let's try two. Two is going to be a too much, but I'll, I'll, I'll work with it. Okay. So here we are. Now we have her blurred out. So I'm going to make another mask and I'm going to go control I on the mask to get rid of my effect. And now I'm going to paint it back in using a white brush. So I make my, my colors white down here. I grab a white brush whatever size I want to make it that I'm comfortable with painting it back in. So now I'm going to just gently paint with a nice soft brush, uh, that softness back in, but I'm not going to go over the hair. I'm not going to go over the eyes. I'm just going to go over the bigger parts of the skin here. And if you do goof up and you go over some of the hair, no big deal. What we can do is we can come back and repaint it with a, a white or a black brush. So I'm going to come in here and get her jawline. And notice I'm going up to her jawline, but I'm not going all the way. The reason for that is, is I don't want to lose the detail. I like losing this wrinkle here, but I do not like losing the actual detail in her chin or her jaw. So we're going to come back down here. We're going to just blur out all this, make her skin nice and soft. What a great cell phone picture this, this is. I mean, really... You know, I'm not a big fan of cell phone pictures, just never have been, because uh, I really think that they, you know, manufacturers could do a little bit better job. I know iPhone has come out and, you know, are have been a lot better in years, the re most recent years. Uh, but, you know, and notice I'm painting right up, right up to the eyebrow, right up to the eyes uh, with a nice soft brush. Keep in mind, a soft brush. Let's see here. What did I miss? I missed here. Her lips are okay there, and I missed this eye. I know I get quiet every once in a while because I'm thinking. 
All right, so there we go. We blurred it out. So now I'm going to switch it back to black, and I'm going to clean up my mistake. So notice the blur here. I made a mistake there. I made a mistake in this eye. I don't want don't want her eyes to lose detail, and I don't want her eyelashes to lose details. I don't want her eyebrows to lose detail. I don't want any of the eyebrows to lose detail. So gently bringing them back. Gently. Gently bringing them back. Like so. Bring back the eyes just a touch here. All right, back it up. Now, what are usually things that are definitely in detail? Well, her hoop here needs to be in detail, and I missed. Look at that, I missed bad. That was bad. Let me, there we go, correct that. So now we're going to take a nice little, keep that hoop nice and sharp. Uh, come back down here on the jewelry and paint over the jewelry here so it's nice and sharp. Sharp, sharp, sharp. Do, do, do. Paint, paint, paint. Get the jewelry nice and sharp. Brings back some of the if it brings back some of the skin details, no big deal. By the time we zoom out and print this, it's not gonna be bad. Uh down here, just another touch here. Do do do. Make sure that edge is in. Alright, coming back up in the photo. Let's look at her lips. Her lips are a little bit off. Let's let's clean up the lips, blur it right to the uh edge of the lips here. Do do do. Like so, like so. Beautiful. Alright, I think I've got my details where I want it. Now, what I'm going to do is to dial this in and blend it back in, I'm going to change the opacity ever so slightly. So instead of being 100%, maybe it'll be 70 or 80%. Let's see, right about 75% looks like a good number. All right, let's look at it without, with. All right, now she has smooth skin. Love it, okay? And it just smooths out some of the details, and it's just simple. It's just nice, nice little simple blur. Boom, and it's done. Uh... Two minute, three minute edit, I think I spent on it. All right, so now we're gonna go control alt -E. We now have another composite layer. What do we wanna work on next? Well, I really think we should probably bring out some color here. Uh, I really wanna bring out the lips. I wanna really bring out the eyes. So I'm going to take and uh, cut the eyes out and uh, we're gonna just take and Draw some circles around the eyes here using the uh, poly, la poly lasso tool. We're going to use the shift key so that we can add a second one and grab the other eye at the same time. And it's okay to be a little far out because we're going to blend these back in accordingly. Got to find the end of my other one here. I'm not finding it. Why am I not finding it? End. There we go. Great. I'm going to go edit copy. And then I'm going to put a new layer up and I'm going to go edit paste. Now, if I turn off every other layer in the photo, you will notice that all I've got, all I'm working with now is those eyes. Now, what do I want to do with those eyes? I want to adjust it. I want to adjust the hue and saturation. So we're going to do hue and saturation. I'm going to bring those eyes out. I want to see what color they really are. I think they're going to be green, almost piercing green. Make it a little darker, not too dark. A little more brighter, a little more saturated. Uh, maybe we want to make them blue. I don't know. Let's see. Red, green, blue, blue. There we go. Oh, blue's nice. I like blue. We're going to make her blue-eyed. That's fine. Now, notice we don't want to include, of course, the blue skin or the blue white of the eyes. Not a problem. What we do now is we mask that out. So bring back our original layer so we can see what we're working with. Mask it out. And now we blend by using the mask. And using a black brush, nice and soft, and we gently bring it back. And we just bring back the area that we want, which is just the color in her eye. Like so. Kind of like putting on makeup. <laughs> I'm not very good at that, by the way. <laughs> Last time I put on makeup, I really goofed not only... I really grew somebody up. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. They look like the Joker instead of, uh, uh, you know, a, a, a woman with makeup on, we'll say. That's kind of funny. Actually, that's really funny. <laughs> it's amazing some of the things that you remember when you're working at. And, and like I said, this is all therapeutic for me to sit here and do this. It can be for you as well. All right, let's back it up. Oh, look at that. Look at her eyes just pop out on the picture now. It's like, whoa. You know, they're not natural color, but it's okay. You can play and have fun with it. 
All right, let's get in and do her lips here. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, well, we got to do the Control Alt Shift D. We're gonna make a new composite layer so that we can save our edits. All right, now what I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do two things. I don't like it that she's too serious here. She's just like, "Yo, look at me!" Oh, you know. I want a little bit more of a smile. I'm gonna use the filter Liquify. So I'm gonna come up here to Filter and Liquify, and it's gonna bring me into Liquify. And of course, I don't think you can see it because it made it full screen. And what I'm going to do is in Liquify, which I believe comes with Photoshop Elements, is I'm just going to take the Forward Warp tool and I'm just going to curl her lips ever so slightly up and then try to blend this edit back in. And I goofed it up already. So I might have to undo this. I got to undo it. Hang on. <laughs> I don't know if you can even see that. I think it goes away, doesn't it? Filter. We're going to go liquefy, and I'm just going to take this big old brush here, and I'm just going to curl her lip up and in and up and in and up and back just a touch. Just a touch more. Bring her cheekbone down just a touch. And I'm going to bring her nose in. I, I noticed there's a little bump on her nose. No big deal. We can fix that just ever so slightly nudging gently the different pieces of the picture and we'll take the nose and we'll shrink the nose just ever so slightly oh i like it okay so we're now gonna hit okay and bring it back so now i will show you the before and after so you can see where we're at uh so before would be this picture notice not so happy uh, a little bit uh, you can see the bump on the nose. You, the eyes are, are a little dull yet. We now added color. We morphed a few things. I did screw up that eye. I noticed that. I did just notice that. I did did screw up that eye. So I'm going to undo the liquify, and I'm going to try it one more time while I have have it right here. So filter liquify, and we're going to try fixing the nose one more time. Ever so slightly nudging that nose back into place, and her eye make it shape it right back up here. And bring this back in like that, and bring this out like this, and that, and like that, and like so. Yeah, that looks better. All right, now give her the smile that she deserves. Love, uh, too pouchy. Let's try one more time here. Do, do, do. Okay, and bringing it back. That looks better. That's a little more natural, I think. Maybe not. I'm, I'm hurrying now because I, I'm noticing the time. All right, so... Here we are. Now we got to do the lips. Okay, so we morphed the lips. Now let's grab the lips. We're going to copy the lips. So what you can do with all these edits is if you take different pieces out of the photo that you want to work on. So like saying if you want to work on the lips, you can take and draw around the lips, hit edit, copy, put a new layer down, and go edit, paste. Now all we're going to work on is the lips. Okay, so... Bring her back, and I'm going to say, okay, I want to adjust the lips. So I highlight my layer that's just lips. I'm going to go into image. I'm going to do an adjustment, and I'm going to do a hue and saturation. Let's see what we can get here. We're going to get some nice saturation here. We're going to bring the dark. We're going to bring it dark. We're going to bring it more saturated because we went to reds. Maybe shift it to the reds. Just, yeah, there you go. Beautiful. All right, now it looks like she got a little lipstick on. Okay, now we're going to blend it back by using the... Uh, mask utility, you know, putting a mask on there. Starts off white. We're going to paint black to get rid of the uh, uh, the edit uh, where we don't want to see the edit. So, like, in the actual skin, we don't want to see the edit. So we're going to soften that edit up and bring it and shape her lips up just ever so slightly. And I got to... Now I'm going to reverse it. I'm going to go white again, and I'm going to draw right over where I think her lips are. Right there oh look at this this is great love it love it love it love it very fun very fun whoops i made a mistake there so i'm going to go back with my black brush and just shape her lip up just ever so slightly like so love it now you could add some other final uh touches here so Control alt shift d now we got another composite we can then take a regular brush with white right on a, on the layer right on this layer and we could take and go into the brush utility here and see if we can find that brush that i love so dearly which i can't find right this second uh, so we have to load them i gotta remember where to load them you know i think that's probably my biggest 
biggest complaint about the new photoshops i don't know where they they put them anymore <laughs> they used to load right off that little uh double headed arrow so there we go uh we want effects brush let's see da, 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 da. what the heck da, 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 da. i don't see it. assorted brushes maybe let's try that okay Yes, right here, number 48 or number 25. These these brushes are fun to use. I love these brushes. Uh, what you can do now is take some white and go over all the high highlights, the real big highlights. So like right here, it's white, white. Go one, two, three, and now you just in, put a glimmer in. Now you go back into your brush and you rotate the brush ever so slightly so it's not the same glimmer. And you go over this highlight. And maybe you do it one more time for another area. So rotate it again, different direction. And we're going to go up here on our hoop earring. Bing, bing, bing. So you can even, you can fade those effects out, you know, just like anything else. So now maybe what we want to do just for one last edit, since we got about four minutes left, I'm going to take it, I'm going to make it black and white and just bring back just the color in her lips and her eyes. So let's do a uh, an adjustment layer, which is right here. Uh, the half moon cookie thing. I know, isn't that so technical? The half moon kick cookie thing. I'm going to do a black and white layer, and you'll notice it turns it immediately black and white. I'm going to take one of the defaults. I'm going to see if we can get a little bit lighter. I don't want to go too light, but a little bit lighter. I like that. That's pretty good right there. And we're going to go and come back down to the layers, and I'm going to get into the mask, and I'm going to paint away with a black brush. And a standard black brush. I gotta find a standard brush here. And of course, I gotta load the brushes again. So basic brushes again. Yes, please. Thank you. And we're gonna go right there. Probably a 16, 21, 65. Let's try 65. 65 looks good. All right. And then I'm gonna adjust the size as I go here. So back in here. And I'm gonna shrink it up just to paint inside of her, the color of her eyes. I'm going to hurry and do this very quickly. And I'm going to do her lips real quick. Now, having a black and white photo like this, and then putting this, this little bit of color back in, and then, of course, shaping it up, because God knows, you know, I know I can't draw very good sometimes, or paint very good in Photoshop, because I just can't, especially with a mouse. I really want one of those uh, really high-resolution pens. That would be neat. All right, so let's see if we got it here. Do we have it with two minutes to spare? All right, I think we do. But I think what I want to do is maybe, well, we'll leave it this way. We'll leave it this way. So that's kind of a neat effect there to do with the eyes and the lips. It's, it's a little over the top. This is not what I would typically do for, I would soften these effects a bit so it's less less pronounced. But I am hurrying, so please bear with me on that. But this is how you can get around and make modifications to every different piece of this. Uh, you know, if you don't like the way something is, you can always uh, lower the hue and saturation now. So let's uh, do a hue and saturation real quick and just desaturize it a little, little bit. See, now it's soft. Now it's a lot softer. It's still there. The color's still there, but it blends more with the photo. So there you go. There's, there's Miss Amy dolled up from her cell phone picture all taken care of. I hope it helped you learn a few things about Photoshop and uh, a couple of different things there. And let's see, I'm going to go back to host. I want to thank you for joining us for the Digital Babble every Wednesday night, 7 p.m. here on FingerLakes1.com. Go check out our website, uh, tdbny.com, and uh, you can see any of the previous shows. You can see some of this stuff. There's going to be tutorials and stuff as I finish writing them. They'll go up on the website as well. If you want to sponsor the show, Give us an email, or if you want to send us photos or questions, uh, you want to know something about photography or Photoshop, please give us your questions or comments, thedigitalbabble at gmail.com. And I'm Flipper, and I will catch you on the flip side. A flip side studio production. It's the Digital Babble. Tune in every Wednesday at 7 p.m. on FingerLakes1.com. Check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Oh, yeah.